Good morning. It's just Sandin once again. And we'll look at arithmetic sequences today. Now, in your arithmetic sequence, there's several things you have to pay attention to. First of all, a sequence is a ordered list of numbers and it goes on forever. Now, in this particular sequence, 5, 9, 13, 17, 21, you'll notice that they are continually going up. A sequence could continually go down instead. And it goes up by the same amount every single time. In this case, it goes up four, and then another four, four, goes up by four. So going from here to here, you're adding four, plus four, plus four, plus four, okay? But the best way academically to mathematically, I should say, to determine this is to find the common difference, and that's what D represents. The common difference is the second term minus the first term. Now, you can technically do that with any two consecutive terms. In other words, I could do 13 minus 9, or I could do 17 minus 13, but it has to be two consecutive terms, not this one and that one. It has to be two consecutive. Now, there's something special else you need to know about this, and that is there's a special way that they name these terms, and they name them with a letter A for some reason, and they put A, and then instead of a exponent, they do something called a subscript. So they say sub, and then the number of the term. This is the first term, so A sub 1, A sub 2, A sub 3, A sub 4, a sub 5, oops, not n, I was already thinking about that, a sub 5, and then if you want any particular term, but you don't want to have to say which term you're talking about, you call that a sub n, because that's just some term, and you're going to fill in the value of n, like 1, 2, 3, later. So, common difference, second term minus first term, a sub 2 minus a sub 1, in this case 9 minus 5. Make sure you put it in that order. It's going to mess you up if you don't. 9 minus 5. 9 minus 5 is 4. So our common difference in this problem is 4. It's a daisy. Let's get this to where I need it. There we go. So, let's get rid of this so that we have something to look at here. We said D was 4. Well, if I need to know the next three terms for this, I can just take the last term, 21, and add 4. That's going to give me 25. So my next term is 25. 25 plus 4, 29. 29. Ooh, let me fix that. 29. And then 29 plus 4, 33. And there's my next three terms. So if it asks you for the next three terms, that's how you're going to do it. The next kind of thing is to find a rule for the sequence, for the arithmetic sequence. Now, in our case, we're going to be calculating this, but there's a general rule, and it's a sub n, the general term for any term, is the first term, a sub 1, plus n, the number of the term, minus 1, 
times your common difference d. And this is all in your textbook. Um, n is the number of the term. a sub n is the nth term, any particular term, whichever n that is. a sub 1 is your first term, and this is the formula. So we know our d here was 4, so a sub n, we're going to leave n as the variable, is the first term, which we know is 5, plus n minus 1 times we know our common difference is 4. So we're going to distribute the 4, just to make this simplified, a sub n equals 5 plus 4n minus 4, I distributed the 4 here and here, and then I just combine my like terms. So a sub n equals, I'm going to put my 4n first, don't have to, but it's easier, and then 5 and negative 4 make positive 1. So if I wanted to find a particular term, I could keep doing this, and that's not a problem. But it'd be a little easier for me if I were trying to find, for example, the 10th term, I'm going to put 10 in for n. Now I'm going to do it here since I've already simplified it, but if you didn't have a simplified version, you could plug it in here with these two values and just do the simplification and be done. But since I have 4n plus 1, 4 times 10 plus 1, 40 plus 1 is 41. Now, if I wanted to find, say, the 101st term, I'm not going to want... I could do the 10th term this way. That wouldn't take me a whole lot longer. But I'm not going to want to do 101 of those. So, 4 times plus 1, if I plug in 101... 4 times 101 is 404 plus 1, and I get my final answer of 405. And that would be the 101st term. And there was something else I wanted to demonstrate for you. Um... As I said before, D does not have to be positive. D could be negative. Um, for example, 200, 190, 180, 170. You can see here that when we take our second term minus our first term, we're going to, the big number is on the bottom, so that's going to mean I'm going to get a negative answer. So a negative 10 would be D. So that's an example of something that has um, a negative value for D. Finally, uh, you have to determine whether an arithmetic sequence is an arithmetic, if a sequence is arithmetic or not. And then if it is, find the common difference. All right, so here are two different sequences. In this first one, I know that this difference is 1, this is 2, 3, 4, 5. It's following a pattern, and it is a sequence. The problem is this is not an arithmetic sequence because the common different, there is no common difference. They're all different. Not arithmetic. However, if I go to the other one, the common difference is consistently 2. So therefore, yes, arithmetic and D is 2. And that's how you would do that kind of problem. 
I hope this has answered your questions and I hope you have a great day.